Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and a mom with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I've got some more east riding of Yorkshire for you today and we find ourselves yet again on the outskirts of Beverley where again in the Yorkshire Wolds and the sun is shining it's a very nice day indeed this one consists of an east end and a west end and it's a big hall to catch as well and our walk around will certainly catch that and the word walk is important because it's in the village's name welcome to Walkington Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Walkington is a village and civil parish in the East Riding of Yorkshire, situated approximately three miles to the southwest of the town of Beverley. It lies on the B1230 road and Beverley Grammar School is not far away. The civil parish is formed by the village of Walkington and the hamlet of Broadgate. According to the 2011 UK Census, Walkington Parish had a population of 2,337, a reduction on the 2001 figure of 2,481. Predominantly a linear type village along one main street, I could in fact turn this one into a circular walk in a way, thanks to a lot of footpaths. It's been a predominantly agricultural village for centuries, although these days it's full of more modern housing estates as well. Being so close to Beverley, as you might expect, it's pretty good for commuters. And it's a fairly affluent village too, with lots of big, grand houses. It's not quite the sort of place that would be termed upper class or snobbish though. Rather, it's a friendly, welcoming place that has a lot of history to it. Let's have a bit of history for Walkington next. The name of the village derives from Anglo-Saxon. It probably meant Walker's Farm. There have been many things found in and around the village too. A few miles west of Walkington is the Bronze Age Barrow Complex of Walkington Wold. The remains there include the Walkington Wold burials, which are the decapitated remains of Anglo-Saxon criminals. Much like Bishop Burton, to the east of the village is one of the medieval stone boundary markers for the sanctuary of St John of Beverley, and it's now a scheduled ancient monument. The Walkington Hoard and other coins of the Coral Torvey tribe were discovered in large numbers here between 2001 and 2008, and they're now in the Yorkshire Museum. Walkington has a heavy connection with the Fawcett family. A Richard Fawcett owned land at Paul and Thongambold in 1673. By the early 18th century, the Fawcett family was rich enough to expand considerably. John Fawcett notably owned land at Thongambold in 1720, as well as 200 acres at Hunsley. John Fawcett's nephew, Hugh, inherited from him just over 500 acres in Hunsley, and when his son, also Hugh, died in 1752, the land was held by his widow, Mary. Mary and her daughters began to extend eastwards into Walkington, Little Wheaton and North Dalton. Eventually, through some generations, Annie Elizabeth Fawcett would marry John Daniel Ferguson, and in 1866 they set themselves up at Walkington Hall. John Daniel Ferguson had been known as Gravel Jack before his marriage because, as a steward of the constables of Burton Constable, he'd been responsible for the sale of gravel from the foreshore of the River Humber. He was not a stranger to Walkington, being one of the 13 children of Daniel Ferguson, who was a former rector here. His youngest brother, Douglas, took over from his father as rector in 1860, inheriting at the same time a wealthy church glebe. Annie, Elizabeth and John Daniel Ferguson Fawcett had holdings of 1,440 acres, so that between the two brothers, most of Walkington Village was accounted for. The 
There's way more history to Walkington, including things like the mystery of the Red House and the Hayride Procession. Those and more can be found in the links in the description. For now though, it's demographics time. The population density of this place is 153.8, with the residents here spread out over some 15 square kilometres. The age groups look like this. Walkington has a majority of working age citizens at 52.7%, there's a moderate amount of children at 20.1% and the remainder are over 65. Ethnically, Walkington's residents identify mostly as white Brits, with the percentage for that coming in at 98.5%. And the average house in this lovely corner of the East Riding of Yorkshire has a price tag of £371,000. The Bus Times website lists three services for Walkington. These are the 143, 943 and the 180. The main one is the 143 between Ferriby and Beverley. The village has three public houses located along the main road, one of which is now closed. These are the Barrel, the Ferguson Fawcett Arms and the Dog and Duck. Let's start with the Barrel. Even though there are much larger pubs in the village, it's the Barrel, a good old fashioned boozer, that all the locals gravitate towards. The Dog and Duck is a different affair. This serves excellent quality food with a large variety of options, ranging from traditional pub food to delicious speciality dishes. The Ferguson Fawcett Arms is no longer a pub. It closed its doors on the 4th of October 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. However, it was sold to an investment company and now it appears to be some kind of art gallery, if these signs are anything to go by. Now, as you can probably hear, Walkington Primary School is behind me. The kids are out, it's dinner time. So uh, this is the best I can do for filming the school. I'm afraid I'm not standing outside the gates. The village school, Walkington Primary School, is situated in Crake Wells, a minor street in the eastern end of the village. There's a nice amount of open space within the village too, none more so than here at the recreation ground and playground at the village's south. This park is not the only open space within Walkington Parish and we'll see why that's the case when we travel to the east towards Beverley later. All Hallows Church is a Grade 2 listed building originating from the 15th century and it's located right in the heart of the village. The south doorway and transept arches are believed to date from around 1200, whilst major rebuilding work was completed in 1818 and 1819, retaining the medieval windows and tower. The church has a thriving team of bell ringers who ring before each Sunday service, which was temporarily on hold due to COVID-19. The active congregation supports a well-attended Sunday morning service, a midweek Holy Communion service and evening worship services. There are also a number of regular weekday activities. The church is open during the daytime as a place of quiet for those who need space for personal reflection or prayer. It forms part of the Four Towers benefice, which also includes All Saints at Bishop Burton, St Peter's at Rowley and St Michael's at Skidby. Here's one of the four Methodist churches there have been in Walkington over the years. They were built in 1820, 1822, 1879 and 1887 respectively. The phone box here is another that's coloured white as opposed to red and it still has a working telephone. No book exchanges here folks. Like both Bishop Burton and Cherry Burton, there's one village shop, a cost cutter, which stands next to the village hall. It's been a difficult time of late at Walkington Village Hall as there have been no income for it since the national lockdown was announced. However, it has now reopened. The Village Hall, the School Hall and the Methodist Schoolroom can all be hired for various functions. Outside the Village Hall is the Parish Notice Board. Tick off this one people, Walkington has been visited by yours truly. Town 
end park at the western end of the village is a former chalk pit. There was more than one of these. Collectively, they were known as the Walkington Village Pit. One was called North Middle Howe and was used by villagers on Sundays to dispose of their rubbish. It was grassed over in 1995, trees and shrubs were planted and a pond was dug to create a memorial wood commemorating the fall of the Second World War. That pond is not this one though. This is yet another mere, similar to but not quite as large as the ones in either Cherry or Bishop Burton. It's surrounded by a pleasant little footpath and it's a lovely little spot for some peacefulness and to watch the ducks. This is the church paddock, an asset to Walkington, providing a quiet area in the middle of the busy village for people just to come and sit and while away the hours. This is Walkington Hall. It was occupied in the 1860s until the 1920s by the Ferguson Fawcett's and later by the Chater Fawcett. It was built by John Lockwood, a Beverly solicitor, in 1802. It was the Fergusons who left their mark most prominently on the hall, which included a great deal of landscaping and the construction of walls and farms. Most of the mature trees around the hall and the old rectory are the result of their planting. I like the clock tower here too. Making an appearance once again is a cycle route. This one is number 164 which cuts its way through this part of the Yorkshire Wolds towards Beverley. These lamps were interesting as well, they reminded me a bit of those in Etton. Even after electricity arrived here, many houses stuck for several years to their paraffin lamps. And that just about brings the main walk here in Walkington to a close, but we're not finished because out to the east there's a housing estate which to the untrained eye just looks like a normal residential area, but I know differently. Let's go and check it out. So here we are on the estate in question, and this is almost like a village within a village, and it looks pretty much just like a normal housing estate, but it's anything but. This is the site of the former Walkington Hospital. To the east of the village is the site of a former hospital. I'll admit I couldn't remember for the life of me what it was called while I was filming this, hence why I called it Walkington Hospital. Its name was Broadgate Hospital, which is why this area is known as Broadgate. It was a former mental hospital. It was located on a site previously occupied by Broadgate Farm. It was designed by Charles Henry Howell using a corridor plan layout. It opened as the East Riding County Asylum in October 1871 and became the East Riding Mental Hospital in the 1920s. It then joined the National Health Service as Broadgate Hospital in 1948. The introduction of care in the community had a detrimental effect in the early 1980s and the hospital went into a period of decline. Once the patients had been transferred to Delapole Hospital in Willoughby, Broadgate Hospital closed in April 1989. Following closure, the site remained empty for a couple of years but was subsequently demolished for redevelopment for these new houses. There's also another open space here as well in the form of a football pitch. Mill Lane United play here. Mill Lane United are an under 14 grassroots football team playing in the Group 1 Mighton division of the Holland District Youth Football League. And to finish with, some of the hospital buildings still stand. Three lodge cottages and the staff housing on the main road is all that remains of the former Broadgate Hospital. And that just leaves you guys needing a picture bit for the parish of Walkington. And that's coming your way right about, wait for it, now.
So I would imagine that house behind me, the white one, is probably one of the old hospital buildings. This is a little bit of an odd one out, considering that most of this estate is all newer builds. I won't say new builds because they've been here a while, but they're certainly newer than that house behind me. That brings Walkington to a close, and we'll be heading off to another part of the East Riding next Saturday. You'll have to tune in on that Saturday to find out what's next. This has been the Parish of Walkington, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.